Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! It can be hard to know where to start when first approaching the world of doll customs. In this video, I will provide you with knowledge of the basic materials you'll need to get started, or at least what I know from my experience. To be honest, I did a lot of research myself to make this video. Hopefully it will spare you time and get you pointed in the right direction. This list is split into several sections. Materials for creating a face, materials for doll hair, and materials for doll clothes. All the materials I talk about are listed in the description box below. Let's begin with the most essential materials for the doll's face. Acetone nail polish remover, q-tips, and tissues. These will be used to remove the doll's factory paint. Pure acetone would also work. If you already have nail polish, just check to see if acetone is the first ingredient. Watercolored pencils. A common question people ask is, does it have to be watercolor pencils? Can I just use my colored pencils? Nope, they have to be water-based in order to properly function with the sealant. Oil-based materials will not be sealed due to a chemical reaction and become permanently sticky. The brand of watercolor pencils I use is Faber-Castell, but any artist-grade brand will do. I've seen other artists use Derwent and Prismacolor. If you don't want to invest in every color of the rainbow just yet, and are more interested in testing the waters with this hobby, I suggest planning out your doll's face ahead of time and only purchasing the colors you want to use. Most art-grade brands allow you to purchase single pencils. You can find these at art stores and also purchase them online. Soft Pastels Pastels are used to create those soft, gradated spots of color or shading on your doll's face. I'm using this selection by Master's Touch simply because I wanted a lot of colors to choose from. Even though they are called soft pastels, keep a sharp object like a palette knife nearby for scratching off the pigment. Then, use soft brushes to pick up the powder and apply it to the face. I tend to use a larger brush for the cheeks and a smaller one for eyebrows and such. Again, you can purchase soft pastels at art stores such as Michael's as well as online. Pencil sharpeners and erasers. It's important to keep those pencils sharp for details, so pick up a sturdy sharpener. For erasers, I use a standard eraser for scrubbing off large mistakes and a kneaded eraser for getting at odd parts of the face for more delicate erasing. Mr. Super Clear. Mr. Super Clear, abbreviated as MSC, is a sealant product that comes from a company called Mr. Hobby, a Japanese brand that designs products specifically for making models, dioramas, and toy customizing. It is revered by face-up artists as the one and only sealant to use on dolls, and for good reason. This sealant not only protects the doll's face, but also keeps the colors bright and vibrant and does not yellow over time, if you get the UV flat version. The biggest drawback to Mr. Super Clear is its toxicity. This product is highly dangerous if inhaled, so take the proper precautions when using it. Wear a mask, go to a ventilated area, and make sure nobody's around. Personally, I hold my breath as well as wear the mask and then flee the scene once I'm done. MSC is sensitive to temperature and humidity, and these conditions will affect how well the sealant works. Ideally, spray your doll on a cool, dry day for best results. If you want to get really specific, the optimal temperature is 25 degrees Celsius with a humidity around 50 to 60 percent. Yeah, picky stuff. Here is a doll that was sealed with a local sealant I purchased at Michael's. This was my very first face-up from two years ago, before I knew about Mr. Super Clear. And as you can see, she's now very sticky, and if you look closely, you can see where the individual spray drops hit her face. In comparison, here is a doll I made close to the same time but with Mr. Super Clear. Because it is a Japanese product, the best way I know how to obtain Mr. Super Clear is through Amazon.com. It ranges from about 20 to 30 US dollars depending on the seller and whether or not you want to pay a little extra for that UV protection. I say it's well worth the money and we'll see you through many face ups. I know it's really hard to wait for it in the mail when you're egging to start your first custom, but it's worth it. Alternatives to Mr. Super Clear Many people wonder if there's a decent alternative to MSC. Some people can't deal with the toxic nature of the product, and others simply can't find it where they live. Well, while I haven't tested these myself, I did do some thorough research and found a couple of alleged alternatives. Testers, Purity Seal, and Liquitex Matte Varnish. I also found this video of popular face-up artist Andrea using a Liquitex matte sealant with an airbrush, which you can see here. I've also read reports of people dabbing on Liquitex matte varnish with a makeup sponge instead of using a spray sealant method and being pleased with the results. I'd like to be clear once again, I haven't tried any of these out for myself yet, so I can't guarantee how well they may work. However, I would suggest the Liquitex matte varnish sponge application method as a start, just because Liquitex is a great brand and most people don't own an airbrush. Cotton gloves. Lastly, get yourself a nice pair or two of cotton gloves. I wear these while I work to protect the doll's vinyl face from my oily human hands. Some doll customizers even wear gloves every time they handle a doll. But I'm not that careful. You can find cotton gloves at Walgreens and CVS, as well as a variety of other places, and of course online. 
Next, let's discuss the secondary materials, or the materials that I highly recommend but could be skipped if you're tight on cash. Acrylic paint. Same as the watercolor pencils, acrylics are the paints to use on dolls because they are water-based. Some artists paint the entire face using acrylics. It really depends what medium you're most comfortable with. I generally use paint to build color up when the pencils can't do the job, and to add shines to the eyes. I personally prefer the brands Liquitex, Golden, or Alpha. Acrylic paint is a basic material and is sold at every art store. Pearl X Powders. This is for the people who love shiny, glittery things like I do. Pearl X Powder is basically micro glitter that sticks to about any surface for a beautiful metallic sheen. I find that the colors are bright and vibrant and add a little something special to the doll's eyes. A little powder goes a long, long way, so this product can also be used for a number of other crafts, like on polymer clay. It can be found at craft stores like Michael's, often near the embossing and scrapbooking area, as well as online. You know how messy regular glitter is? Wait until you play with micro glitter. Liquitex High Gloss Varnish. This is used for finishing touches. Some artists like to apply it to the lips and eyes to get a more lifelike appearance. I'm advising the Liquitex brand here only because it's the only one I've ever used and I'm very happy with it. When you apply it, water it down slightly and make sure to let it dry one to two hours between coats. If you rush it or apply it too thickly, it will become sticky. Although, I'll be honest, it's much easier to photograph a doll that doesn't have shiny eyes. False Lashes and Elmer's Glue All. I couldn't get eyelashes to stay on dolls for the life of me until a generous Instagram friend gave me the secret. First, get some cheap dollar store lashes. They will be thinner and thus more appropriate for scale purposes. Use Elmer's Glue All, not the regular stuff, to apply the lashes. You will also need a toothpick to apply the glue and some tweezers to hold the lashes in place. Although it takes some patience and delicate work, putting eyelashes on a doll can add a touch of realism and look very elegant. Epoxy Sculpt. If you like to make serious modifications to your doll, like altering the body shape or sculpting horns and ears, I suggest Epoxy Sculpt. It's a two-part epoxy medium that dries in four to six hours after you mix equal parts. You don't have to bake it, it's strong once it's dry, you can sand it, and it's waterproof. You do have to wear protective gloves when you handle it though. Also, if you're making something like long horns, I recommend armature wire as a base. Now let's talk about materials for giving your doll new hair. Thread scissors. A pair of thread scissors is incredibly useful for doll sized projects, so I suggest you pick some up. You'll use these to cut off the doll's original hair close to the head. Pliers. I use pliers to pull out the glue clumps and hair from the inside of the doll's head. Pins. I use sewing pins to poke new holes in the head if they aren't already there. Fabri-Tac Permanent Adhesive. I use this glue to secure loose hair plugs on the inside of the doll's head. It works for doll hair because it's not water-based, so it's resistant to boil washing. And the rerouting tool. This is my rerouting tool. I get a lot of questions asking how I made it, but it's honestly too easy. I bought a small drill chuck at a hardware store, that's this entire piece here. I've been calling it a drill bit in my other videos, but I just learned that's not what it is. It's intended to be placed inside of a drill press. The needle is just that, a needle that I cut at an angle using wire cutters. The drill chuck screws open and close just by spinning this piece here, so I secure the needle doing that. Easy peasy and convenient for when you need to replace the needle. You can also opt to buy a rerouting tool at dollyhair.com. And of course, you'll need the hair. The three types of hair I'm most familiar with are nylon, saran, and kanekalon. Someone told me it's pronounced cane kalon or something, but kanekalon is so much fun to say. It sounds like a Pokemon. The properties of these synthetic hairs vary, and you can use the appropriate one for your custom. I'll put the specs on screen for you now, which you can pause to read. These doll hairs can be purchased at both Dolly Hair and RestoreDoll.com, and My Little Customs if you're in the UK. Hanks of hair range from about 2 to 20 US dollars depending on the type and length you purchase. Doll artists may also choose to use animal fibers for doll hair due to its natural texture and the scale works well on dolls too. I tend to shy away from animal fibers because I'm a huge animal lover and always want to know where my animal products come from. So if you decide you really want an animal fiber like sheep, goat, or alpaca hair, please do thorough research and purchase from a response seller. And if you can, buy it local. For this doll, I got lucky. My father's a pilot and was able to pick up some mohair for me while he was on layover in Peru. Another option to consider is acrylic yarn. It's not only easier to find, but a lot cheaper too, and looks similar to some animal fibers. It does require some preparation to look like this. To see an excellent tutorial on how to make a yarn wig, watch this great video by Mosequito.
Yarn wigs are also fun because you can pose them to look like shampoo commercials. You can buy acrylic yarn at places like Michael's and Joanne Fabrics for around $3. One skein is more than enough for a doll wig, although if you want multicolors you'll have to buy more. You can either root doll hair or make wigs. I can show you some of the methods I know, but that will have to be in another video. Lastly, let's talk about clothing materials. I use my sewing machine with scrap fabrics and materials in my art supply box to create doll outfits, so there's not a real price estimate I can give you here. Of course, you don't have to use a sewing machine to sew. I use tissue paper to make doll patterns and save them in Ziploc bags. After two years of doing this, I have established a nice library of clothing patterns to choose from and modify accordingly. Generally, your typical dress or shirt pattern only takes a couple square inches of fabric. I like to sew regular sized clothes too, so there's always small pieces left over, which is more than enough. I won't get into how to sew outfits in this video, but generally you're going to need these items. And of course, if you're interested in this hobby, I'm guessing there's a good chance you already have most of the materials from other hobbies you enjoy. As a closing statement, make sure you purchase art grade materials for your customs. You might be tempted to go for a cheaper option on the pencils and sealant, but the truth is you won't be happy with the outcome. Cheaper art supplies contain a lot of filler that will not adhere, fade, or may even harm the plastic. So it's worth the splurge. Lastly, I would like to point you to a website that was incredibly useful to me when I started customizing dolls, and I highly recommend reading her articles. And again, you can find all the materials I covered, where to buy them, and helpful websites in the description box of this video. Thank you so much for watching this rundown of the materials I use, I hope you found it helpful. Join me for part 2, where I will be doing a step-by-step -step process video about how to approach your first doll's face. I'll see you there! Stay artsy! Annyeong!